A perfect Sunday afternoon in the Bay Area and the usual sellout throng at Candlestick Park for the game this afternoon between the Green Bay Packers and the San Francisco 49ers. The Niners have the best record in the league, but the Packers are right in the midst of a big wild card battle. Two teams will make the wild card and the Packers 5-5 five five need this game very much. And good afternoon again, everyone. I'm Dick Stockton along with Dan Fouts. During the week, Don Mikowski, the Packer quarterback, was listed as doubtful at one time with a hyperextended right knee. But he's going to play, and he's going to start, and uh, at least in the eyes of Lindy and Fonte, he breathes a sigh of relief with that news. Well, he should breathe a sigh of relief. The big concern, though, for Infante is that big, bulky knee brace he's going to be wearing on that right knee. Also, Lindy told us yesterday that he feels that this team is a serious contender. But to be a contender, he's got every, his team has to play every play as if it was their last play. And as far as the 49ers are concerned, they have a 9-1 record, best record in the league. But when you mention that to George Seifert, he is still not comfortable with that. He has some concerns. Well, a major concern is the condition of Jerry Rice. He twisted his back on Wednesday, did not practice the rest of the week, came out here in pregame warm-ups, gave it his best shot. Jerry Rice will start. But the injury factor is starting to pile up on the 49ers. Major concern for George Seifert. It is 78 degrees and hot on the field at Candlestick Park. Sunny and warm. Not much of a breeze as we start this game. The Packers have won the toss and will receive. Mike Cooper kicking off for the 49ers. Brent Fullwood is in the middle. He's got Vince Workman flanking him along with Herman Fontenot. Underway with a short kick, and it's going to be Workman, the rookie, on the 16. Brings it out across the 20-yard line where Steve Hendrickson makes the tackle. So Don Mikowski, who last week, despite the loss, still threw for 357 yards, has the offensive front in front of him. Ken Rutgers and Rich Moran. Blair Bush, the center. Ron Hallstrom and Alan Weingrad on the right side. Clint Didier starts at tight end for Ed West. Keith Woodside and Brent Fullwood are the running backs. Aubrey Matthews will start at wide receiver with Sterling Sharp. Their star receiver, Jeff Query, will come in as well. This is the first appearance for the Packers here in San Francisco in 15 years. And they start from the 30. Brent Fullwood gets a big hole off the right side and brings it out close to midfield and a gain of 15 yards where Chet Brooks and Ronnie Lott make the stop for San Francisco. The base defense for the 49ers, Pierce Holt, Pete Kugler, and Larry Roberts, who is starting for Kevin Fagan. Charles Haley, their top pass rusher, along with Matt Millen, Michael Walter, and Keena Turner, the other linebackers. Darrell Pollard and Don Griffin are the cornerbacks. Chet Brooks and Ronnie Lott, the safeties. McHire and Wright come in on passing downs. Tony Mandarich is in now at right tackle. James Campen started in the backfield and moved. The give again to Fulwood, and he gets to midfield. Gain of four, where Matt Millen, the inside linebacker, makes the stop. Well, and the reason the Packers have made these changes up front is to get a good blocking tight end. And with James Campham in the game, he really fills the void for Ed West being out with the injury. With West out of there, the two tight ends are Didier and Spagnola, the veteran who came off injured reserve. So they need a lot of bulk. And this is the main reason that Lindy closed his practices to the media this week. Second down and six in midfield. Campham is an eligible receiver. Once again, Fulwood, he gets into 49er territory. Pete Kugler makes the tackle, but it'll be fourth down as the 49ers stop Brent Fulwood, who carries three straight times. It'll be third down now and three. Lindy Infante, terrific offensive mind for the Packers. Well, and he closed practices because he has a number of injuries on his offensive unit, especially at the receiving position, at tight end and in the wide receiver place. But I got to wonder how effective they can be throwing the ball with the offensive guard playing tight end for him. They have four wide receivers out of the shotgun. Inside handoff to Fontenot. And Herman Fontenot 
Gets close to first down yardage, and he is shy. And it'll be fourth down, and the Packers will kick. Again, another running play for the Packers, and Fontenot, if he doesn't trip in the hole right here, he would have had a nice gain and at least enough to pick up the first down. But there you see him. Nobody touches him. Goes down all by himself. Don Bracken coming in to punt, and we have a whistle. I think what they're trying to check in the replay booth is exactly where contact was made when Fontenot was on the ground, because he's allowed to crawl for extra yardage. Right now, where they spotted the ball, Dan, he missed the first down by a little over a yard. Dick Hantak is our referee this afternoon. Well, he needed to get to about the 43 and a half yard line. Let's see where he goes down, how much he crawls for, and when a 49er touches him. That's about the 49, or the 45, excuse me, and then rolling over he might have the first down here and he does the Packer offensive unit coming back on and so while he was on the ground after further review the ball is placed on the 44 yard line they moved it one yard to the 44 now they're going to have to measure to see if that's enough for the first down. And even with the spot moved to the 44, they still may not have enough. Group of 49ers and Packers, it looks like they're ready for the opening coin toss the way they're at surrounding Dick Hancock. Now the question, if this is short, will the Packers go for it? They are short. Big decision early in the game for Lindy and Fani. And he sends Mikowski back out, so they're going to go for it on fourth and short. So the Packers in somewhat of a gamble here on the first possession of the game. It'll be fourth and less than a yard on the 44 of San Francisco. Fullwood and Michael Haddix are in the backfield. Two tight ends. And that'll be enough for the first down. Brent Fullwood had forward progress. And it is a, four, a, a Packer first down. So they went for it on fourth and one and made it. Matt Millen made the tackle on Fullwood. And the Packers are running behind the, probably their best offensive lineman, Ken Rutgers, number 75. And Billy Ard is in there playing tight end. So the Packers are using some of their linemen as uh, tight ends to pick up the slack for the injury to Ed West. Big gamble, though, early in the game. And when you're fighting for a wild card berth and you're playing on the road, why not? New Orleans won. They beat Atlanta. First down. Makowski's pass is caught by Sterling Sharp. And that'll be good for another first down for the Packers. Don Griffin and Keena Turner make the tackle a gain of 12. And this is Makowski's first pass of the day, and he elects to backpedal, maybe uh, to get better vision, but also to with concern for that right knee. But that's a fine throw for his first one. One thing you got to watch for him in Makowski's passing game is if he misses, he usually misses high. First down, Packers on the Niner 31. Here's Brent Fullwood going wide and getting to the 30-yard line, a gain of about one. Pete Kugler, the nose tackle, is in on the stop. There was some concern about Fullwood's condition coming into this ball game. The coaches rested him last week against Detroit. In fact, in the pregame warm-ups, Brent Fullwood went into the locker room earlier, and there was con some concern as to whether he had re-injured that hamstring, but he's running the ball very strong. He looks in great shape. He has gained 25 yards in five carries thus far. He's been the workhorse. Second down and nine. And Mikowski will go to the sidelines. It's the 49ers who have called a timeout. So the Niners use a timeout on defense here with 10 minutes and 12 seconds. 
remaining in the first quarter of a scoreless game, but the Packers are on the march. Dick Stockton and Dan Fouts back at Candlestick Park. No score. Early here in the first quarter, the 49ers have used a timeout, and Don Mikowski has brought the Packers from their own 31 now to the 49ers 30. That's the drive thus far. Second down and nine. Mikowski in a hurry gets rid of it and completes the pass to Didier and Clint Didier has another first down to the 49ers 20 yard line Walter and Turner make the tackle for the 49ers now we're going to check out Mikowski and how he's moving around on that bad right knee it appears he slips and his knee buckles just before he rights himself and finds Didier but that gives you some idea about his athletic ability and also his mental ability kept his wits about himself found the receiver got the first down there you can see that bulky brace on the right knee first down and on the draw play here's Fullwood and Brent Fullwood gets inside the San Francisco five and even carries Ronnie Lott for a couple of yards which few do and a gain of 16 yards before Lott and Eric Wright bring him down. Well, this is a great run by Brent Fullwood as we watch him on the draw play here. Good job up front. There's Hallstrom blocking on Millen, and Didier gets down the field. But now Fullwood runs through Chet Brooks and Michael Walter, and it's Ronnie Lott who gets pulled for five down inside the five. A terrific first quarter for Brent Fullwood, who just gained 16 yards, and it's first and goal on the four. Michael Haddix joins Fullwood in the backfield. Penalty marker down as Fullwood picks up maybe a yard. Matt Millen, the stop for San Francisco. Boy, and Pete Kugler really hit Fullwood in the middle of the hole, and that shook up uh, Kugler a little bit. He's playing with a bad right knee, and one of the 49ers was probably in that neutral zone. It'll be against the 49ers, five yards. It'll be half the distance. Offside defense, number 96. Penalize half the distance. Replay the down, first down. Daniel Stubbs. By the way, the 49ers have a change in the defensive secondary. Darrell Pollard suffered a pinched nerve in his neck and is probable the rest of the game, and Eric Wright has replaced him, number 21. The secondary has been uh, bit by the injury bug all year long. First and goal at the two-yard line. And here's Makowski on a quarterback keeper. Touchdown, Green Bay. And no one within 10 yards of him. Great fake by Mikowski. When you're running the ball well, you've got to, the defense has to respect the first fake. There's Lott tackling Fullwood, but Mikowski has the ball, and this is a walk-in for a quarterback with a bum knee. Chris Jackie will try to add the seventh point here of a very impressive opening drive by the Packers. He does, and it's seven to nothing, Green Bay. So if the 49ers had any concern about Lindy and Fadi's offensive manpower with the Packers, it's twofold at least now. Don Mikowski's two-yard touchdown run giving the Packers an early lead over the 49ers. And now Chris Jackie will kick off for the Packers. Going back deep for the 49ers, Johnny Jackson on the left, Terry Greer is on the right. Of those 10 plays, eight of them were rushing plays. Only two were passes. And the Packers had a fourth and one that they converted successfully on that drive. Kickoff heading for Greer, but it's six yards in the end zone, and it'll be down for a touchback. Take a look at this touchdown. One thing you want to watch here is John Spagnola blocking on Daniel Stubbs and also Ronnie Lott 
going for the fake. Lott has to have contain here, number 42. But watch the great block by number 89, Spagnola, on Stubbs, and that gets Mikowski in the end zone. This had to be the last play that the 49ers would suspect with a quarterback running the ball who's got a bad knee. And for Spagnola, who was just activated this week. Meanwhile, Joe Montana, 13 touchdowns, no interceptions in the last five games. First down on the 20. They send Craig wide to the left. Montana throws wide open is John Taylor. And it'll be a first down for the 49ers in a gain of 14. Very potent offense that Joe Montana has. Up front, he has the tackles, Bubba Paris and Harris Barton. The guards are Guy McIntyre and Bruce Colley. Jesse Sapolo's the center. Brent Jones, the tight end. Craig and Tom Rathman are the running backs. Jerry Rice and John Taylor, who caught that last pass, are the wide receivers. It'll be a first down on the 34. With his first reception out of bounds at the 44, Mark Lee makes the stop. Green Bay's defensive unit features basic 3-4 defense. Up front for the Packers, the ends are Blaze Winter and Robert Brown. Bob Nelson is the nose tackle. John Anderson, despite an ankle injury, is in there, along with Tim Harris, the big pass rusher there. The outside backers, Noble and Holland inside. And in the secondary, Lee, Brown, Murphy, and Stills. And Chuck Cecil will play about half the time in safety. First down on the 44 of the Niners. Here's Tom Rathman. And Rathman may lose a yard or so. Johnny Holland and Tim Harris pursuing on that play. And we're seeing uh, Tim Harris starting talking already. Third play of the game. But he made a nice play. He fought off the block of Roger Craig and got out in front of uh, Rathman there. Good pursuit by the Packers. Harris likes to talk it up, particularly at home, but he doesn't mind going on the road and, and talking trash, as he calls it. Well, the big thing is that he backs it up with outstanding play. You can talk trash, but you better back it up. Second down and 11, following the loss on that play. Back to the 43. Pass out to Craig. first down they get into Packer territory a gain of 14 Johnny Holland and Ken Stills on the stop anytime you get Craig one-on-one -on -one against the defender you've got an edge well in in the coverage here is just too slack on Craig as he went in motion and he's just wide open by about 10 yards Ken Stills is late coming up and this is very uh, scary for a defensive back having a guy like Craig and his running ability in the open field The Niners are trail seven to nothing, marching in themselves on a nice drive of a first down on the Green Bay 44. Here's Roger Craig trying to run up the middle and wrestle down at the 41. Picked up about three. Ryan Noble and Robert Brown. Burnell Dent also in on the play. Well, you know, you got a game with the number one offense in the league in the 49ers and the number two offense in the league in the Packers, and you ex would expect a high-scoring game. Already 7-0, and now the 49ers are countering with a nice drive of their own. It'll be second down and eight. Play fake. Montana fires. Jerry Rice, and he makes the catch. 20-yard pass play to Jerry Rice with Dave Brown defending. And another first down for San Francisco. This is the added dimension that Jerry Rice and Joe Montana give to an offense. Montana is in trouble here. Rice sees it, waves to his quarterback, makes the grab on a beautiful throw, and gets his feet just in bounds. Or were they just in bounds? The right foot goes down. Here's the left foot. And that's good. And a first down on the 21 of Green Bay. The lone back is Rathman. He carries. And he is bottled up. 
at the 19-yard line, a gain of two. Interesting that the Packers' Achilles heel has been their defense against the run, and they've handled the 49er rushes pretty well thus far. Well, nobody's been able to handle Joe Montana all year. In fact, he's completed four passes in a row today, and he has now 147 passes without an interception. He's now halfway to the all-time record of Bart Starr of 294. Ooh. Terry Tausch replaces Bruce Colley at right guard. Double tight end, Brent Jones and Wesley Walls on second and eight. Montana's pass, caught by Rice inside the five. Johnny Holland makes the tackle, but the 49ers in rhythm, in sync, have a first down inside the Packer five. Here's Rice working against Mark Lee, and watch Lee looking at the quarterback here. Rice with an outstanding quick move there to get open, and this is what really scares you, is the fact that uh, if you fall and slip down against these 49er receivers, they may take it all the way in for six. Leads the NFL in yardage. First and goal, San Francisco on the four. Montana rolls out. It's great for the touchdown. That was quick. Quick and easy. Terry Greer, or John Taylor's in motion here, and he's going to clear out the secondary for Craig as he takes another perfect pass for Montana in the flat and in the end zone. For Roger Craig, that is his first touchdown reception of the season. And now Michael Cooper is in to try to tie the game. Barry Helton, the punter, holds. And the score is tied. We have had two impressive drives to start this game. With 4-11 remaining in the first quarter, we're 7-7. A beautiful cloudless sky at Candlestick Park in San Francisco where the 49ers and the Packers are all tied at 7-7 here in the first quarter. Dick Stockton and Dan Fouts, the offensive line, and Bob McKittrick talking with them. The scoring drive and Joe Montana was perfect. Six for six and 77 yards and a touchdown pass to Craig to tie the score. for kicking off. Workman, Bland, and Fontenot are back deep. And Carl Bland at the five for the Packers. He runs right into the 49er defenders at the 25-yard line. Steve Hendrickson on the stop. Well, celebrate America's homecoming on Thanksgiving on the NFL today at 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. Brent Irvin, Dick, and Will. And take a look back at two decades, two coaches, and the two sports of two tall Jones. The Philadelphia Eagles against the Dallas Cowboys in a traditional Thanksgiving Day football feast. America's homecoming week. Hope you're with us Thanksgiving Day on CBS. First and 10 Packers on the 25. Darrell Pollard back in the game, the cornerback for San Francisco. as Sterling Sharp hit immediately in a pickup of nearly nine yards. Michael Walter making the tackle for San Francisco. You know, there's a saying that there are horses for courses. In this ball game, the 49ers defense traditionally is a zone defense. The old bend but don't break. They're going to make you earn it as you drive down the field. But this Lindy and Fani passing system is perfect for that type of defense. A lot of short controlled passes, reading the zone defenses. And if they give Mikowski time, we're going to have a high scoring ball game. 7-7 already, two tight ends on second and one. And Brent Fullwood's not going to get there. He has stopped short of a first down. Well, look at this brace on that right knee. It looks like it's got uh, nuts and screws and bolts <laughs> and everything on that thing. But it's very light, and uh, Mikowski did practice with it. 
Although when he was practicing back there in Green Bay, the temperature was, uh, the wind chill factor was hovering around one degree. And he said that it was a real slow motion practice because everybody was practicing on a sheet of ice. But it held up. That brace is very important. Third down and one. And a good hole that time for Brent Fullwood. And it'll be a first down for the Packers. As they roll the scores, you saw that the Minnesota Vikings lost and the Bears came back to win. The Packers are pounding their left side, the 49ers' right side, running at Charles Haley and Larry Roberts. Nice kick out block there by Rich Moran. And Fullwood is really running with authority. Fullwood has gained 46 yards thus far and a first down on the Packers' 38-yard line. Nearly two minutes remaining in the first quarter. Swings it out to Fuller. And Ronnie Lott and Daryl Pollard wrestle him down and wrestle him down hard. Well, Ronnie Lott is a player that uh, he should be playing in the division that the Packers play, in that central <laughs> division, that black and blue division, because he is really the enforcer for this 49er team. And one thing, he doesn't want to leave the game after today and say that his ball club was out hit. They missed his leadership when he was out earlier in the year, and a lot of people think that the one San Francisco loss to the Rams was due to the fact that Lott was not on the field. The Rams hit a couple of big, long passes to their tight end down the middle of the field where Ronnie Lott plays. Billy Yard is the eligible receiver. The lineman, Michael Haddix, rushes and may have a first down, but penalty flags are down. If it is against the 49ers, it'll be a first down for Green Bay, but it appears to be a penalty against the Packers. We'll see. No, it isn't. It is against San Francisco. One of those neutral line, or neutral zone uh, deals there where, you know, defensive lineman or defensive back to stay on side, all he has to do is locate where the ball is and move back a couple of inches. That's really very inexcusable. Offside defense, number 96. Penalty is declined. First down. That is the second time that Daniel Stubbs has been called for that penalty. Under a minute remaining and the clock running here in the first quarter. And Stubbs will hear it uh, when he gets to the sideline because that is really a, a mental mistake that will kill you. First down for the Packers on their own 49-yard line. With the rush, Michael Haddix gets into 49er territory, picks up about three, and that may be the last play of the first quarter. One of the things the Packers are doing today is going with a check with me system where Mikowski will come up in a balanced set with two tight ends and two wide receivers, one back, and he'll look at the defense and he'll pick out the spot where he wants to attack them. The clock will run down ending the quarter in an unusual one. Not so much that it's 7-7, but we have not had an incomplete pass. Mikowski was perfect with four attempts. Montana, six for six. And that is the end of the first quarter at Candlestick Park with the Packers and the 49ers all tied at seven apiece. Start the second quarter at Candlestick Park. Dick Stockton and Dan Fouts. The score is tied 7-all. But look at the quarterback numbers. Perfect first quarters for both Don Mikowski and Joe Montana. And another stat we're not seeing on that is sacks. Absolutely zero. The one time Montana got pressure, he rolled away from it and hit Jerry Rice for 20 yards. Mikowski still leads the NFL in yardage thrown and touchdown passes with 19. Second down and seven for the Packers. Mikowski's pass is caught and hit hard is Aubrey Matthews, but the forward progress is the 41 and a half yard line. Darrell Pollard makes the crunching hit on Matthews. 
and we thought Pollard was hurt. He was shaken up in that first series, but he is back in a big way as he really pops Matthews. But look at the pressure. Not much on Mikowski. Perfect tackling form there for Pollard. He obviously as well. And a, perhaps an important game for Matthews because Perry Kemp is out with a knee injury and he is inactive. So Matthews becomes an important performer. Meanwhile, the Packers have used their first time out right here of the first half. And Lindy and Fonny will talk with Mikowski early here in the second quarter. Splendid afternoon in the Bay Area. Sell out at Candlestick Park. The 9-1 49ers are tied with the Packers, who are fighting for a wild card berth in the NFL. And many of the other wild card contenders have won today, like New Orleans and Chicago, to name two. But the Packers have really struggled in second quarters this year. Lindy really wants his ball club to stay close, not fall behind like they've done all year. Third and one on the 42 of San Francisco. Penalty marker down. Brent Fullwood fumbles, picked up by Ronnie Lott. And Lott is wrestled out of bounds inside the 20. But the flag is down, and they're going to bring it back. And the 49ers might have jumped offside. Holding offense number 61. Offside defense number 31. Penalties are offset. Replay the down. Third down. And a big break for the Packers on that one. On the offsetting penalties. There's Chet Brooks, number 31, coming across too early. There's the pull down by, actually, that's Rich, Mer or the center, Blair Bush, pulling down uh, Pete Kugler. Then Rod Lott is off to the races there. Mikowski uh, tried to make a tackle, but he was blocked out of the way. 39 yard fumble recovery and return is nullified. It was Blair Bush, you're right, number 51. He said 61, and that was Jerry Boyarski's right number. There, He's a defensive lineman. Tampa Bay has defeated Chicago. We thought the Bears had won, but Tampa Bay came back and won the game. Brent Fullwood holds on to the ball this time and picks up a first down for the Packers just about at the 40-yard line. Michael Walter on the stop. So with the Bears losing, they now have a 6-5 and five record, Dan, and so now the Packers know that they can even tighten up that wild card race even more so. Now how do you figure Tampa hasn't won a game since they last played the Chicago Bears down in Tampa. First down for the Packers on the Niner 40 yard line. Michael Haddix is the one setback. On the receiving end. Six yards. It's not bad for a guy 31 years old. Matt Millen, the old Raider, coming out on the screen pass as he reads it perfectly. Mikowski had no choice but to go to Haddix, and then the big hit from Millen. And watch how he gets up in the air here. Whoa. It's like the old Raider days for Matt. They mark it off as a three yard loss. Second down and 13 upcoming for the Packers on the San Francisco 43. Fake. Mikowski's pass overthrown. It was intended for the tight end Clint Didier, although there were several receivers crossing downfield where the ball was thrown. That's the first incompletion of the game. Right now, let's bring you up to date on the NFC Central. Minnesota beating Philadelphia. Chicago losing. That really tightens up that wild card picture even more. That should say 
eight and three for Minnesota instead of seven and four. That's right. Minnesota. Beat Philly, yeah. Minnesota should be eight and three. But Philadelphia beat Minnesota. That's why it's correct. Makowski going deep for Carl Bland and overthrows him. And covered downfield by Tim McKayer. So Philadelphia defeated Minnesota, so the Vikings are indeed 7-4. And, and the Bears, losing to Tampa Bay, are one game behind. Well, as I said, things are tightening up. Whether I know the scores or not doesn't really matter. The big thing here, we've got to tie one here, and the Packers have got to turn it over to the 49ers. Don Bracken will be kicking, and John Taylor goes back deep for the 49ers. is out of bounds inside the 20. That kick went 24 yards. And it'll be 49ers ball when we return. Well, the Packers have outrushed the 49ers 62 to 3. Both quarterbacks are nearly perfect in an exciting game, and people said it would be a high-scoring offense on both sides. 7-7 early here in the second quarter. Very important for the Packers, as we said earlier, to, to stay close to give themselves a chance in the second half. They've played outstanding football in the fourth quarter, and they've got to be feeling pretty good now going into the second quarter, tied at seven. All right, it'll be 49ers ball, first and ten. Only the second possession of the game for San Francisco. A couple of changes for the 49ers that are unique in the league is that uh, they change a couple of linemen by quarters. We now have... Steve Wallace at left tackle for Bubba Paris, and Terry Tausch goes into right guard for Bruce Collin. Hand off is to Craig, and he's picked up by Brian Noble. Noble makes a fine defensive play and a loss. Well, Brian Noble's the number one tackler on this football team, and you can see why. Good instincts hit that hole as it opened up and uh, tripped Roger Craig before he could get out to the corner. Second down and 12 on the 17-yard line. Montana's pass is picked off. Chuck Cecil. And the Packers have a deep in 49er territory. And the interception streak has gone down 149 passes without an interception. And Montana throws the big one here. Well, you got to give a lot of credit to the Packers for doing their homework because this is the 49ers bread and butter pass play. A quick five-step drop by Montana throwing the hook outside to John Taylor. Cecil steps in front and the Packers are inside the 10. That's the first interception of the year for Chuck Cecil. And just as unique as the 49ers substituting players, Cecil and Ken Stills split time at weak safety 50-50. It'll be first and goal on the nine. Jim Bird is in a nose tackle for the 49ers. Michael Haddix to about the seven. Matt Millen and Bill Romanowski on the tackle. Big turnover for the Packers there. Anytime you get the ball down in this uh, end of the field like this, it really has a way of picking up not only the offense, but the defense. They're over on the sidelines now. They're all standing up cheering for that offense to get it in the end zone. Second and goal at the seven. Two tight ends. And Haddix, the running back. Michael Haddix gets to the four-yard line, where it'll be third down. Yet they continue to pound that left side behind Rutgers and Moran. Michael Haddix is a load in there, too. That's a, one of their better plan B acquisitions in the offseason. Really gave them depth at that running back position. Addicts will go out of the game, replaced by Herman Fontenot. 
on third and goal at the four. Linebacking crew, the defensive unit. For the Packers, hoping the offense gets some more points. Kapowski's pass caught. Sterling Sharp and touchdown Green Bay. the eighth touchdown reception of the year for Sterling Sharp, one of the league's best. Well, Sterling Sharp with a Sterling catch as he beats Don Griffin. Mikowski looking all over the field, sees his number one receiver. Look at the concentration as he reaches back with one hand and pulls in six points. Oh, a quarterback's best friend, a guy that makes touchdown receptions. Chris Jackie with the extra point, and it's good. Nine minutes and 54 seconds remain in the first half. And it's the Packers leading again, 14 to 7. The important games thus far, Philadelphia beating Minnesota 10 to 9. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers beat the Bears for the second time this year, 32 to 31 in a thriller. So right now in the NFC Central, the Vikings have a one-game lead over the Bears, and a Packer win today would move them into a tie for second place, just a game behind the Vikings, and Green Bay still has a date with Minnesota. Next week in Milwaukee. So this game is critical, and it's also critical for the 49ers, and it's Terry Greer on the five-yard line. It's an out for the 27. Fumble, and the Packers have picked it up again. Another turnover. And Carl Bland, I believe, has made the recovery. It is Carl Bland, their special team star of the year so far. Greer has the ball. Let's check out who pops it loose. Dent swipes and misses. Looks like Mike Weddington right there. There's the ball on the ground. And the recovery by Carl Bland. Another big turnover, and the Packers are in business again. You know, and I just said a moment ago that this game is also important to the 49ers, despite the fact they're 9-1, and one because, you know, the, every team gets into a slump, and the Packers right now have uh, scored following 9 of 17 opponent turnovers. That is not a good record, although they have converted following the first turnover in this game. Right, they're one for one today. That's, that's the that's important right. thing. Again, a short field for them on the 25-yard line. A lot of options for Mikowski. First down on the 25. He overthrows John Spagnola, who was wide open. But breathing down Mikowski's neck and right in his face was Charles Haley. I know Mikowski would like to have this one back because uh, Spagnola is one on one if he makes this gra grab with uh, Ronnie Lott. Good choice of plays, though, on first down after a turnover. Fake the ball up in the middle and try and get something big. Second down and 10. Again, two tight ends for the Packers. On the draw play, here's Fullwood. And Brent Fullwood is finally brought down at about the 20, 21 yard line. Charles Haley, Larry Roberts, and then it was Ronnie Lott on the tackle, and Fullwood is having a sensational first half. Well, he really is. And check out the blocking on the left side of the line, and then the cut by Fullwood to the outside as he reads the hole and gets up the field. Right there, great cut behind the block of Ken Rutgers. Already 52 yards on 10 carries for Fullwood. Fontenot is in the game on third and six. Akowski, a little high for Fontenot, who is open. That'll bring up fourth down. Well, if he would have connected to with Fontenot on this one, it would have been a contest as to who wanted it more, the offensive player or the defensive player, because Fontenot is going to have to run for it. But Mikowski, again, when he misses, the ball usually sails a little bit high. 
Chris Jackie will come in to try to add three to the total. A 38-yard attempt coming up. Holding is Don Brackett. The Packers capitalized on one turnover. They did not on this latest one, on this missed field goal. <laughs> Following the missed field goal by Chris Jackie, the 49ers, who still trail 14 to 7, have the ball first and 10 on their 21-yard line. by the normally sure-handed Tom Rathman. Yeah, normally sure-handed. He has 50 catches on the year. Asked him about it yesterday. He says, well, I have a lot of receptions because they trust me. I usually catch everything they throw me. I think he jinxed himself by saying that to us yesterday. That was a good throw by Montana. At least he shows he's human. Yeah, but he says he's made of steel, and men, men that are made of steel don't get hurt. He said that too. I hope he doesn't get hurt now. Second down and 10. Double tight end for the 49. Montana throws it and overthrows Jerry Rice. And that'll bring up third down. Mike Holmgren, the offensive coordinator of the 49ers, said when things aren't going well for our ball club, we want to jump start it by getting the ball to Jerry Rice. There's a good example of it. Montana just off the mark here as he lets one sail a little bit high. But Jerry Rice is the guy all the players on the offensive team look to to uh, get them going again when things are a little bit rough as they are right now. They're not rough for the Rams or the Giants who are off to early leads in their game. blitz and that was Tiger Green storming in unmolested and a loss of six yards and it'll be fourth down and the 49ers will have to kick it away Tiger Green comes from the right side of our screen here Montana never sees him look at the huge hole Green runs through to pick up his second sack of the year and the first sack for either side in this game Barry Helton will be kicking from the goal line. The rookie Jeff Query goes deep for the Packers. And a superb kick by Helton. Query inside is 35. Got good speed, but the 49ers cover it well, and he is out of bounds at about the 47-yard line. A 52-yard kick, walls on the tackle. Candlestick Park in San Francisco on a glorious Sunday afternoon where the Packers lead the 49ers 14 to 7. 7.53 remaining in the second quarter. This is Dick Stockton along with Dan Fouts. For the Packers who are in the wild card hunt, they know that a victory would move them into a tie for second with the Bears, a game behind the Vikings. And you know, the 49ers want to protect their status at 9-1 in the league. And yeah, it really is a beautiful day. Very unusual to see the flags just laying limp here in Candlestick. On first down, Makowski completes the pass to Aubrey Matthews, short of a first down by a little over two yards. And you know, Aubrey Matthews, he hit the daily double last week against Detroit. He sprained not one ankle, but both ankles. Here he is on just a little delay and then out pattern. Makowski reads the coverage, comes back to him. And it's a good gain on first down for the pack. Matthews with two injured ankles. Perry Kemp out of action with a bad knee. And that's why we're seeing a lot of two tight ends for Green Bay. And Ed West, their starting tight end, is out of action. Second down and two. And Keith Woodside, for his first carry of the game, gets nothing. Might have even lost a half a yard as Matt Millen again makes a fine play. And that'll bring up third down. And Matt Millen's running mate, Jim Burt, was also in on the tackle. Millen was shaken up just a little bit. 
And I know when Burt finds out that Millen's going out of the game because he's hurt a little bit, it's going to give it to him. These guys, look at Burt trying to pump that football team up. He, he feels that uh, the one thing that maybe the 49ers defense is missing is a little bit of emotion. That's him, his job, and Matt Millen's to give it to him. Third and three. And a direct snap to Herman Fonino, but it won't work. As the Packers are stopped on the 45, two yards shy of a first down, and Pierce Holt was the alert defensive lineman on that play. Now what we're seeing is the defense is making the proper adjustments after both offenses marched down the field and scored very easily. There's the Burt and Ernie show there. Jim Burt and Matt Millen. It was Pierce Holt, number 78, who made the big play. And it's fourth down, and Don Bracken in to kick. John Taylor deep for the 49ers. Sails over the head of Taylor. Bounces inside the five and is down there by Carl Blaine. So Joe Montana is going to have a long way to go following that 43-yard kick. Thanksgiving Day on CBS begins with the NFL today at 3.30 Eastern time and the Philadelphia Eagles against the Dallas Cowboys. Always a good one. Philadelphia coming off that big win today against the Vikings back in it after losing a couple in a row. All begins with the NFL today. Joe Montana starts from his two yard line. Montana's pass to Brent Jones. And the tight end is ridden out of bounds by Mark Lee at the seven yard line. Great confidence by Montana dropping back into his end zone, knowing that his offensive line is going to give him protection. Look first for Jerry Rice. The defense was double coverage on Rice, and then uh, Montana worked it down to his tight end. And you get the feeling watching Montana over the years, and especially this year, where he's throwing for over 70%, that he could play this game with a blindfold on and still do great. Mike Wilson replaces Jerry Rice. It'll be second down and three. for Roger Craig, Johnny Holland, and Mark Murphy brought him down. Well, this is a trademark run for Roger Craig as he hits off the left side. Tim Harris is blocked out of the way, but watch how Craig steps through that tackle from Chuck Cecil with the high knee action. A lot of people think that the 49ers are on a different level than the rest of the league. Craig told oh, us no. yesterday he thinks there's still another level they can reach. First down, out to 21. Montana has Raffer. And he's hit immediately at the 24-yard line, gain of a two or three, and Chuck Cecil makes the stop. Real guessing game for the Packers defensively today. What do you do to stop all these weapons? How do you take away Taylor and Rice and and the running backs out of the backfield, Craig and Rathman. Sometimes you got to play zone. Sometimes you got to come after them. The one thing that the Packers have learned that since they beat the Bears a couple weeks ago, that they have to play aggressive football. There's the aggressive man right there, Tim Harris. They've kept him away thus far. Second and eight. Rathman. To the 24-yard line. That'll bring up third down. And that was an illustration of the guessing game going on by the coaching staffs. That time the, pack, the Packers were in a blitz. They crowded the line of scrimmage. Absolutely no place for Rathman to go with the ball. Signals from Steve Young on the sideline. Get back, man. Not a bad backup quarterback in his own right. He's won a couple this year. Scott Steven and Burnell Dent, a couple of linebackers in on this third and seven situation. First down, Tiger Green on the stop. 
And the 49ers getting out of trouble started from their two-yard line. What a luxury for a quarterback to be able to throw a short pass to a receiver like a John Taylor and have the confidence that with his running ability, he'll pick up the first down. When Taylor makes this grab, he's about five yards short of the first down. But then he uses those uh, punt return instincts of his, the open field instincts, and gets the necessary yardage. Three minutes and 15 seconds to go in the first half. 14 to 7 Green Bay. Rathman pulls his way off the left side to the 37-yard line. Johnny Holland is there to meet him. Field position very important in this ball game, and you got to give a lot of credit to the Packers punting team. Don Bracken pinning uh, the 49ers back on their two-yard line to start this drive, especially at the end of the first half. It's a long way to go in a short amount of time. Second down and seven for the 49ers on their own 36-yard line. Montana has Rathman out of the backfield. Rathman is hit by several Packers at the 40. Two and a half yards short of a first down. Oh, and these 49er fans just love Tom Rathman because of that play like that. I mean, he makes the grab. The fans know he's not going to try and fake anybody out. He's going to lower that head and deliver a blow to the tacklers. Brian Noble and Johnny Holland took that blow. And the two-minute warning has come upon us. Two-minute warning here at Candlestick Park in the first half. Two minutes to go in the first half, and the 49ers are really hurting at wide receiver. Jerry Rice has gone to the locker room to examine bruised ribs. He very nearly didn't play in this game because of a twisted back, and he hardly practiced this week. And then Terry Greer, who's one of the oldest players on the squad, another wide receiver is out for the game with a sprained knee. So the 49ers are down to the minimum of wide receivers. So they got two tight ends on third and three on their 40. Montana on the run. It's Wilson who holds on to the ball and a first down in the Packer territory and a gain of 13 yards with Chuck Cecil making the crunching hit. Oh, hurry up offense now for the Niners. 49ers almost lost Mike Wilson on that hit. First down, swing pass to Clay. And he's covered by Mark Lee, and that could be a dangerous collision situation the way that pass was thrown. He was led down the field, and uh, Mark Lee was zeroing in on number 33 there. But this, uh, you know, Joe Montana is the best in the game at running the two-minute offense, but he is really handicapped now because his main guy, Jerry Rice, is in the locker room. Really puts the emphasis, shifts the entire offensive thinking to number 82 John Taylor Matt Milling at Millen having a conversation with an official he'll be back in the game second and ten Jerry Rice has come back from the locker room and heading for the 49ers sideline Montana's pass is caught by Taylor first down inside the 30 Pick up with Chuck Cecil the tackle. Well, Dave Brown, number 32, is going to gamble here on the interception, and Montana throws a perfect ball to the outside, and there's that running ability from John Taylor. Quickly on first down, Taylor makes the reception and falls down, but still inbounds, and the clock continues to run. Well, this slippery candlestick turf cost the 49ers a timeout right there. There's Jerry Rice back on the sidelines. Replay, replay. And I'm sure that Montana sees him and is breathing a sigh of relief that he's back. But the 49ers are forced to call the timeout, and now they are left with only one, with 58 seconds remaining in the first half. Back at Candlestick, and Jerry Rice, who just came out of the locker room, is on the field, and he's split wide to the right now. And he had a long run from the locker room back to the huddle, didn't he? <laughs> he has a shorter run here. Second and seven. Montana to Rathman. And Rathman is hit at the 20, short of a first down. Johnny Holland makes the tackle. 49ers have only one timeout left. 
It'll be third and one. Penalty marker is down. Rathman has the first down and is knocked out of bounds inside the 15 by Mark Lee, but there's a penalty marker. And it'll go against the 49ers. A couple of key mistakes for the 49ers in this second, in this first half. The two turnovers and now a uh, illegal motion penalty. Illegal motion. Offense, number 74. Five-yard penalty. Repeat the down. Third down. Steve Wallace, the tackle who went in for Bubba Paris. The one thing the Packers want to force the 49ers to do here is to kick the field goal. They do not want to give up a touchdown. For George Seifert, it'll be third down and six. On the Packers' 24-yard line, 33 seconds remain. This drive started on the 49ers' two-yard line. Montana steps up and drills it. First down inside the 10, and on the receiving end is John Taylor, 15 yards. Montana really fired a strike to Taylor as he is wide open in the middle. And they stop the clock with 15 seconds to go. Well, he just does it every Sunday, doesn't he? Brings his team the length of the field of very little amount of time. The big bonus is getting Jerry Rice back in his huddle. But that offensive line is keeping the Packers way, way away from the quarterback. The 15th play of this drive will be coming up. And with 15 seconds to go and one timeout, if they don't make it here, they've got to go for the field goal. They have enough time to throw it a couple of times before they go for that field goal, though. Montana fires. Rice, touchdown. between Jerry Rice and his quarterback. He's in the open here, but Montana's in trouble. But Rice keeps going along the baseline of the end zone behind the secondary for an easy touchdown. It is 14 to 13 as Joe Montana has thrown the touchdown pass and now Michael Cooper to try to tie this game up and he does at 14 apiece. Montana with good pass protection, but also his ability to move around in the pocket. Looked like he wanted to run for a while. Sees that big hole in the end zone, sees Rice coming, and that's not an easy throw to make. A 98-yard touchdown drive by the 49ers. That was strictly vintage Montana. And nine seconds remain in the first half, and the score is tied once again. 14 all now. Makes you wonder if uh, Jerry Rice instead of going to the locker room, went into some phone booth and came back <laughs> with an S on his shirt. Well, you pointed out how he ran out of the dugout, which is located at the opposite end of Candlestick Park, ran full speed to the sideline, and then got into the game, and then catches his 14th touchdown pass of the year. <laughs> as simple as pie, nine yards to even up this game. But an exciting first half with the 49ers and the Packers in a big shootout here. It really is. And, and I'm going to vote for George Seifert as coach of the year right now because he didn't waste any time to get Rice in the game, did he? They started from the two, and they used, used six minutes and two seconds of the clock. And you saw in the NFL today on the pregame show about how much respect these 49er players have for George Seifert and how he has put his imprint on this team that used to be Bill Walsh's all the way. Yeah, and you don't really hear that much about Bill Walsh anymore. This has really become George Seifert's team. He's off to the best start in football and one of the best starts the 49ers have ever had. Carl Bland is the man in the middle for the Packers. 
Michael Kofer will be kicking off for the 49ers. Line drive kick goes through the end zone. Well, the Packers will take over on the 20 with nine seconds to go in the half. Fourteen fourteen. Packers have two timeouts left. They took advantage of one turnover. Chuck Cecil intercepted a Montana pass. Green Bay scored, but then the 49ers fumbled on their own 25. And the Packers failed to get anything out of it as Chris Jackie missed the 38-yard field goal. And they got to be content going into the locker room tied with the world champ. Not taking any chances. They're going to let the clock run out. Fine ovation by the fans at Candlestick who have witnessed an exciting first half of football. Maybe a little too exciting for them. I don't think many of them expected their Niners to be tied with the Packers at halftime. Craig and Rice have caught touchdown passes. Makowski has run one in and has thrown a touchdown pass to Sterling Sharp. So at halftime, here at Candlestick Park to score, the Green Bay Packers 14, the San Francisco 49ers 14. We're back at Candlestick Park at halftime as the Packers and the 49ers are all tied at 14 apiece. Halftime statistics and a fine passing first half for Joe Montana. Packers have taken advantage of one of those two turnovers and have a time of possession advantage because they've been able to run the ball well. Well, if you're Lindy and Fani, even though you would have liked to score on another turnover, Dan Faust, the fact remains that the Packers are very much in this game. Well, his main concern was to stay close to the 49ers and not fall behind where he had to expose his quarterback to throwing the ball every down and that 49er pass rush getting to Mikowski. But Lindy and Fani's got to be very happy with this 14-14 score. We were on the field talking to Mike Holmgren, who calls the plays upstairs and uh, normally he's a nice soft-spoken guy he said he really had a tough week yelling at players and George Seifert said what's the problem and he had a, a semblance that something might not be right today well Mike Holmgren's an old quarterback in fact he was uh, San Francisco quarterback of the year way back then but he's very intuitive and he felt that this type of game for the 49ers was coming on but the good thing that they've done is they've come back with that big drive at the end of the half to get at least back to even <laughs> Chris Jackie kicking off. Spencer Tillman and John Taylor are back deep for the 49ers. And it's going to be Taylor at the seventh. And a good run back by Taylor. Puts it up to the 30-yard line. And that's really not John Taylor's uh, main job. He's filling in for Terry Greer, who was scheduled to be the kickoff returner. But he went out with that bruised knee. John Taylor showing his versatility, bringing back kickoffs as well. Montana 16 of 21, 163 yards, two touchdowns and one interception. Jerry Rice at the top of your picture. First down, Montana with good protection. Has Rathman out of the backfield. Rathman close to a first down. That's the 40-yard line where Brian Noble and Johnny Holland make the stop. Well, Tom Rathman has really proven to everybody in the National Football League that he has outstanding hands. Montana, with great protection, comes down to his uh, checkout down receiver in Rathman, and you notice he grabbed it with his hands. You don't see a lot of fullbacks catching the ball that way. Second down in the yard, double tight end. Roger Craig on the outside. He's got the first down. And out of bounds at the 47 and a half yard line by Mark Murphy. The 49ers can get into their rhythm as quickly as any team, and you really have to give uh, that offensive line a lot of credit. Protecting Montana and then clearing the way for Craig as he picks up a first down. And the starting offensive line is intact. Wallace 
and Tausch came in the game, but right now it's Bubba Paris and Harris Barton to tackle. McIntyre and Colley are guards, and Sapolo is the center. First and 10 on the 49er, 47. The nose guard makes the fumble recovery. Mark Murphy on a safety blitz caused it. And the 49ers have coughed it up for the third time today. Big play for the Packers as Mark Murphy comes on the safety blitz from the right side of the camera, Montana's blind side, and you'll see that Joe has no idea that Murphy's coming. The ball is on the ground, and Nelson's on top of it. Again, the Packers putting pressure on Montana. That's two sacks. Both have come from safeties. First down on the 44 of San Francisco. Center Blair Bush wants a uh, clean ball. That one's got a little something or other on it. The old veteran. They're going to bring a new one in. Now here it is a perfectly dry day here it hasn't rained in San Francisco in a long time but uh, the eagle eyes of Blair Bush detected something foreign on that ball <laughs> pine tar or something stick them Kowski on first down completes to Sterling Sharp may be good for a Green Bay first down Don Griffin making the tackle. It is good. It's a gain of 12. Well, we talked to Griffin yesterday about Sterling Sharp and what impressed him. This ability right here to get down into your pattern, the quick breaks, not a whole lot of wasted motion there. Very difficult to make a break on the ball with a guy as quick as Sharp. Sharp with a touchdown catch today. And a first down for the Packers on the San Francisco 33. Off the hands of Brent Fulwood. Incomplete. That ball came out like a knuckleball from Mikowski, thrown behind Fulwood. Packers are five and five coming into this game. Four of their five victories have been by fewer than four points. They are used to playing close games and used to coming from behind late in games, but they're even right here and face second down and 10. Mikowski may run. Being chased by Kugler, and he overthrows. Smart play by Mikowski. Really smart play as you see him limping back a little bit. Uh, that knee looked like a very serious injury when it happened last week against Detroit, but he came back in the game and played a little bit. It stiffened up on him. But uh, this man is really coming into his own as a quarterback. That was that play was doomed from the start. He tried to buy time on the rollout, saw that his receivers were covered, and just let it sail in the end zone. And he's in good shape coming up third and ten. You no, know, it's interesting. It's a beautiful day, but yesterday he was complaining that it may be too hot today. You never hear many quarterbacks complain about that. Only quarterbacks from Buffalo, I guess. <laughs> third and ten. Charles Haley is near the top of your screen. Trying to get by Vinegrad, and he gets Makowski for the first sack of the game for the 49ers. The 49ers big sack maker Charles Haley going after his eight and a half sack beating Vinegrad and this is a big play because it pushes the Packers out of any chance of kicking a long field goal. A loss of nine and for Haley that is his eighth and a half sack of the season. Don Bracken will be kicking on fourth down. John Taylor standing on the ten yard line. High kick, and that'll go in the end zone for a touchback. A 41-yard kick by Don Bracken. So the Packers fail to take advantage of that turnover by the 49ers, and the Niners go on offense when we come back.
the wild card picture right now, and two teams will make the wild card. So how important is this game to Green Bay? Well, you got to figure that 10 and 6 is your best shot at getting that wild card. A loss today by the Packers, and they're in big trouble. Rams are winning their game, of course. First down for the 49ers on the 20. Montana has the pass batted, nearly picked off by Blaze Winter, who got his hands on that pass. Well, he'll never get closer to an interception than this one. He makes the block of the ball. The ball bounced straight up in the air and came right down in front of him. Former teammate of mine in San Diego, guy that gives it 100% every play, number 68. Watch him deflect this pass with his left hand and then uh, looking around for it. He knows it's up in the air somewhere, but Harris Barton's got him by the right hand. Second down and 10. Play fake. Here's Roger Craig on the screen pass, and Roger Craig with a big play. Up. Dave Brown makes the stop on Roger Craig. This is really a well set up play by the 49ers as they fake the sweep to Rathman and then Montana finds Craig sneaking out. Good block there by Sapolu, but this block by Guy McIntyre on Cecil clears the way for Craig down the sidelines for about 20 more. Great athlete, Guy McIntyre. And the biggest play of the game. On the 36 of Green Bay. Montana. And a great catch and a fumble. And right now, the Packers and the Niners are going at it and will have a penalty marker thrown. Tim Harris may have recovered the fumble for Green Bay. We did not get an official signal from the officials. I think that's the problem right now. Was this a fumble or was it an incomplete pass? And of course, an official signal would come from the officials. <laughs> <laughs> but yet we do not have one even as we speak. First things first, was this a catch or was it not? Now there's the signal. It was a catch and it was a fumble and Green Bay has recovered. But that's not the end of this one. But what I want to know is why they didn't call it right away. What took them so long? Here's Montana on the bootleg, throws back. Taylor with a wonderful catch. I'm not sure he ever had complete possession of that ball as he was pulling it in. It seemed to slip all the way into his body and then down on the ground. They're taking a look at this one. This should be pretty clear cut to see. Nice attempt by Taylor. But he never had possession oh, of that ball. That's an incomplete that pass. You're right. Bill Swanson is the replay official. They have two televisions in front of them with two tape machines, and they can run them back and forward, slow it down, speed it up, take their time. That's their job is to get it right. But from our vantage point, that was an incomplete pass. We passed the... One minute and 30 second mark on this replay review. Well, it took the officials on the field at least that long to make the call in the first place. The Packers are getting famous for instant replay review plays. There's no catch there. Never quite had possession. They didn't change it, and the only thing that we could think of up here, and I agree with Dan, that it looked as if Taylor never had possession, is that it has to be conclusive enough to change it, which, of course, is really a way out not to change a call. Inconclusive is the rule. What do you think the crowd thinks of that one? That's a yard, and that's all. And you know something else, though, is there was a penalty flag thrown on the play, and we never had any discussion as to what that was all about. Now, you think because of the replay review, they picked up what apparently was an unsportsmanlike conduct play. 
Well, I just think that this instant replay has so many bugs in it, and they continue to expose their weaknesses. The officials on the field are getting second-guessed by the officials upstairs. Not to mention the announcer. <laughs> Especially this one. Second down and nine. it incomplete Aubrey Matthews the intended receiver by the way the penalty marker was a personal foul on both teams so that's why we didn't hear anything on that one well I'm glad they told you <laughs> but there's 65,000 here still wondering I'm sure third down and nine upcoming for the Packers on the 33 14 14 the score early here in the third quarter. And one thing that that uh, controversial review did is it got this crowd fired up and they're becoming more and part of this ball game. Third and nine. Makowski overthrows Herman Fontenot and a penalty marker is down at the line of scrimmage. will be marked off against Green Bay, although apparently they will decline the penalty. Tina Turner has just declined it. It'll bring up fourth down and will kick. Holding offense, number 57. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. Well, let's take a look at this uh, play with, in regular speed and see if he ever had possession. There's no way that you can call that a, a completion and a fumble uh, or an incomplete pass, a completion and a fumble. That was incomplete all the way. Don Bracken will kick. And going back, John Taylor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Taylor will call for the fair catch at the 27-yard line. Herman Fontenot and Steve Hendrickson wished each other well momentarily. And we'll be back to Candlestick Park after this. Nose tackle Pete Kugler looking at the Polaroids. Needed some oxygen over at the bench. Don't forget the 49ers are hampered at nose tackle. Michael Carter, all pro, is out with a foot injury. So it's Kugler and Jim Burt to man that important spot. And it's a warm day here at Candlestick. Very uncharacteristic for November to be 78 degrees as it was at kickoff. Bright sunshine still abounds. First and 10 on the 27th. Montana has the receivers covered and is chased out of bounds by John Anderson. But has enough for the first down. He knows knew where the sticks were. And it's a first down of the 38-yard line. Well, this is what Montana wanted to do here, hit Jerry Rice on the uh, go route as he tried to set up the slant, but good coverage by Mark Lee. But again, Lee slipping and falling down on this candlestick turf. Montana gets out of bounds on it with a first down. You know, earlier we saw Dave Brown slip on that sideline pattern to Rice, so maybe the Packers don't have the best footing back there. First down on the 38. Montana has break. Well, it's Taylor that time, and a penalty marker down, and John Taylor is hit by Jerry Boyarski. It'll be another first down into Packer territory and a gain of 13 yards pending the flag, but it may be against San Francisco, and apparently it is. Well, the Packers uh, get lucky here. They have got to do something to get pressure on Montana without having to blitz safeties all the time. That front line, Tim Harris, Bob Nelson, Blaze Winter, and Robert Brown haven't gotten anywhere near Montana. Illegal use of the hands, offense, number 44, 10-yard penalty, repeat the down, first down. That's Tom Rathman, and that wipes out a first down. Now we said he had good hands. Too good. <laughs> It'll be first and 14 for San Francisco. Nine and one on the year. No 49er team has ever had a better start. The 84 champions, of course, went 15 and one. Montana 
eluding the rush. And Brent Jones makes the catch. It's a good catch by Jones at the 44, good for 10 yards. John Anderson was there on the stop. Now we ought to put the uh, stopwatch on Montana and figure out how much time he's getting to throw here. All day that time, just looking at everybody, the Packers secondary is doing a good job, though, of taking away his primary receivers. But other than Tim Harris, the Packers really haven't mounted much of a pass rush this year. Sean Patterson, defensive end, is hurt out of the year. Second and four. by Mark Murphy. Gain low of 14 yards for the 49ers and they're marching. Well, we saw Rice before on the fake slant and go pattern. Here he's just going to come all the way inside with the slant and you can see the respect that Mark Murphy and Mark Lee have for him playing very soft. But Murphy comes up with a big tackle here. That's one thing that makes Rice so dangerous is his ability after the catch to make the big play. Former 49er receiver R.C. Owens told us yesterday at practice that he thinks Rice has three speeds. And they're all good. <laughs> First down on the 41 of Green Bay. Break. And the Packers close. But a pickup of about four yards that time. Scott Steven, Ken Stills combined to make the tackle. There's a frustrated number 97 out on the field wearing a white shirt, and yellow pants, and a yellow hat. Tim Harris doing a lot of talking now to the 49ers, but the 49ers are answering his talk with some pretty strong actions of their own. There's two sacks in the game by Green Bay, Tiger Green and Mark Murphy on safety blitzes. The 49ers have one. to the 39 he didn't lose that many yards lays winner and that'll be the third sack of the game by Green Bay and that sack hurt Joe Montana twisted him up a little bit maybe he got his uh, back just a bit don't want to speculate on that because that's uh, serious as far as Joe Montana is concerned but again the secondary of the Packers is doing an outstanding job of taking away where Montana wants to go at first as they take away a second receiver. Now they're going to take away his third guy and get the sack as they twist him up a little bit. Maybe knock the wind out of him. The 49ers have used a timeout here, their first of the second half. And with 8.43 to go in the third quarter, we'll also take a timeout. Joe Montana has come out of the game. He's just trying to loosen up Steve Young who has engineered two victories for the 49ers this year against Dallas and the New York Jets has taken over at quarterback. He has a third down and eight. On the Packer 38. Young can't get away, caught in the grass, and Tim Harris has picked up his first. And now he can talk. Now he can talk. That's 13 and a half for Harris this year. Tough situation for Steve Young to come in on for his first play, third and eight. But let's give some more credit to that secondary. And finally, Harris comes through with a sack. And Harris beat Harris, Harris Barton, that is, to get that sack. It is fourth down, and Barry Helton will be kicking. Going deep for the Packers is Jeff Query. Their catch called for, and that ball is going to die inside the 10. And knocked out of bounds at about the five-yard line by Michael Walter. Good angle punt from Barry Helton. Also got a nice soft bounce on this grass. And that'll give Makowski and the pack something to think about. Well, you can think about a big Thanksgiving day on CBS Sports. Celebrate America's homecoming on Thanksgiving on the NFL Today, which begins at 3.30 Eastern time. Brent Irv and Dick Will. And it's the Eagles and the Cowboys. The Eagles fighting for a playoff berth, trailing the Giants. The Cowboys trying to be the spoilers. Always a big game. 
starting from their five, their worst starting field position of this game. Brent Fullwood. Not much. The word on Joe Montana is that he got a knee in the ribs, came out of the game, and he will return for the 49ers. That's definitely good news. Look at those numbers. Again, well over 70% for Joe Montana. He's on pace to set an all-time record for a percentage of completions. To say nothing of Frank Merriwell finishes at the end. Fabulous career. Second down and eight. Mikowski and Sterling Sharp makes a fine catch. The pass slightly behind him, good for 12 yards. Don Griffin on the tackle, and it'll be a first down for the Packers. Watch uh, Sharp come in and out of his break, but I think the 49ers' Bill Romanowski gets away with a late hit here as Sharp's on the ground and Romanowski comes in with a left forearm. Meanwhile, Pierce Holt is also on the ground for the 49ers. The defensive end is shaken up. A lot of injuries to the 49ers. Their depth is really mainly responsible for this 9-1 record. We talked about Montana missing a couple of games. Young comes in and plays well. Their secondary has been uh, beat up all year long. They get Ronnie Lott back. They just never seem to lose a beat. They obviously have the best 47-man squad in football. Yet they're 9-1, and, and that is why George Seifert was not ecstatic when we talked to him yesterday because he knows that sooner or later that's going to chip away at what you said the bench or the special teams on the table. I think that one loss to the Rams is really stuck in George Seifert's mind. He knows he's got to play the Rams December 11th in L.A. The Rams came up here, played a super game against the 49ers, won the game at the end of the ball game, and that is really a major concern for Seifert. He knows that the Rams are laying in those old weeds. Or whatever weeds they have in Southern California. They're tumbleweeds. Pierce Holt walking off on his own power. Roland Putzier will replace him. Jim Burt is also in there. And so is Larry Roberts. Right. So you got the three backup defensive linemen in the game for the 49ers. There's that depth. First down, Packers on their 19-yard line with 6.58 remaining. In the third quarter. Play action and Pete Woodside is wide open. And he'll have another Green Bay first down. Although suspended in air momentarily by Darrell Pollard. Good for 13 yards. Packers had a lot of success earlier in the game running to their left side. Watch how the Packers fake the ball to the left side. Come out on the bootleg with Mikowski. Here's the fake to Fullwood. But Mikowski doesn't seem to be bothered at all by that brace or that sore knee. Throws a nice soft pass for Woodside and it's another Green Bay first down. Woodside is the second leading receiver for the Packers this year and that was his first catch today. Here's Fullwood. Spinning off defenders, and Brent Fullwood picks up another first down for Green Bay. Charles Haley and Chet Brooks on the stop. And that was a delay pattern all the way to Fullwood. Mikowski back in the pocket, just buying some extra time, letting the secondary drop back. Watch Fullwood on the, as a tailback just come out and stand out here, very calm, knowing he's going to get the ball. And then he breaks the first tackle from Millen. And the Packers are very impressive on this drive with another first down. Like a pinball machine. First down on the Green Bay 43. Makowski incomplete. He was going for Woodside. Michael Walter, the linebacker, defending that time. Good pressure from Charles Haley. This is Charles Haley, number 94, coming on the blitz along with Keena Turner, number 58. And Mikowski, how does he get rid of this ball? Super job of just throwing it away. Haley has the one 49er sack this afternoon. The Packers have four of their own. Second down and 10. No 
Double tight end. Up and. In time, Makowski off the hands of Sterling Sharp and nearly super interception by Don Griffith, but he couldn't hold on, and that'll bring up third down. Sharp is really the big play receiver for the Packers. In fact, Linian Fani calls him that impact player that this offense really needs. Having an outstanding year, but I think he should have made that grab. It was out in front of him a little bit. He was extended, but it did hit him in the hands. Pierce Holt has returned to the game for the 49ers. Third down and nine. They get third and ten. Out of the shotgun. Bukowski completes wide open to Carl Bland. And a first down into 49er territory. 12-yard pickup to the 45. You know, you watch Mikowski, and it's like the second coming of Joe Montana. He stands in the pocket, feels a little bit of pressure, moves around, picks out his receivers, and throws strikes. Don Griffin on the tackle, but a first down on the 49ers, 45-yard line. Niners have outpassed Green Bay, but the scoreboard is all even at 14 apiece. Brent Fullwood on the handle. Picks up four. Chet Brooks, the strong safety. This is Chet Brooks, number 31, and he's going to blitz himself on the safety blitz. Reading the block, beating it to the inside as Haley was working in tandem with him and makes the tackle. Chet Brooks has done an outstanding job filling in at that strong safety position all year long for San Francisco. Billy Ard, the left guard, has come in as a blocker. On the left side on second down and six. Fumble. It was Fullwood who fumbled, and it's the 49ers who recovered. Matt Millen, I think, had it. get credit. Bukowski right in the middle of that, but it's Millen who recovers the fumble for the 49ers. And Michael Walter, number 99, punches it loose as Fullwood is making his cut. There's the Walter, number 99. Watch him come. Nobody there to block him. Fullwood sees it. The ball gets stripped out. And Matt Millen comes away with the fumble. That is the first turnover of the game by the Packers. Something that did them in against the Lions a week ago. Matt Millen and Chet Brooks on the sidelines. And we talked about how Millen wants to stir things up emotionally for this ball club. No better way than to get a big turnover like that one. 49ers have a first down on their 43. And Joe Montana in the game. Connects with Jerry Rice. And Rice has a first down in Green Bay territory. And a gain of 13 with Mark Murphy on the stop. Well, watch Mark Lee, number 22, as Rice runs just a three-yard stop pattern. Mark Lee is so far out of the picture. There he comes. That's a little bit late. A lot of respect for the speed of Jerry Rice. Rice has caught six passes for 82 yards today and a first down on the Green Bay 44. Double tight end. On the counter, Tom Rathman. Gets by one defender and picks up about nine to the 36 of the Packers. Scott Steven on the stop. Well, we saw Jerry Rice beating Mark Lee to death all day long, and he is now having a seat on the sidelines. And Van Ron Pitts, number 28, is in the game in his place. Coaches can see from up here in the press box when a player is maybe uh, giving a little bit too much ground, changing those spikes, appears that he may have a cramp. 
It'll be second down and two for the 49ers. And Montana didn't know where that hit came from. Brian Noble stormed in up the middle and hit Montana, who then was holding on to his ribs momentarily after the hit. Well, the Packers have really laid it to Joe Montana today. Noble comes clean on the blitz. Again, it's a blindside shot. And Montana's ribs have got to be real sore, along with a lot of other bones in his body. That is the fifth sack of the game by the Packers. And, nope. they're, and they're spreading them around a good bit. A couple of safety blitzes for sacks. A couple of linebackers. Harris has got one. Five sacks for 24 yards. Third down and seven now. marker down a delay of the game call or did they rule that the official ruled a fumble recovery but I believe the delay of the game the delay of the game on the offense no snap fourth down no that should be third down it is third down George Seifert just yelled third down and the correction is made by Dick Hantak but you wonder about Montana. Here he is, a veteran of, of 11 years in this league. His ribs are hurting, and maybe that affected his concentration and let that 30-second clock go down to zero. It'll be third down and 12 for the 49ers. And what's happened after the sack and the penalty is that they're well out of field goal range. With less than a minute and a half remaining in the third quarter. the pass to Rathman. And Rathman may have a first down. I believe he does. A gain of 12, and that's what they needed. Johnny Holland and Dave Brown on the stop. You see the three receivers to the left side of our screen here, but Jerry Rice is on the other side. And he's going to attract the attention of three Packer defenders. And that leaves Rathman wide open in the flat. And with his running ability and strength, no problem picking up the first down. And you'll appreciate this. How's this for a milestone? Joe Montana has become the 11th quarterback in NFL history to go over 30,000 yards. The play clock has run down to zero. No whistle. No, no. And the pass to Roger Craig is incomplete. But you saw that the clock had run down unless the clock was not right to begin with. Well, what, what's the sense of having a clock if it's not going to be right? You know, that's a very good point. <laughs> I guess the officials miss things too, but that play clock was at zero, and there was no delay of game call. Now the officials are going to confer. But none of this takes away from the fact that Joe Montana went over the 30,000 yard mark. And I got a feeling he's not through yet. One minute and eight seconds. They're going to adjust both clocks. Well, it's the game clock that uh, did not stop with that incomplete pass there. 49er coaches on the sidelines, very aware of it. Uh, you don't expect that type of mistake from your home team clock operator, though. Well, now the clock says 10 seconds. And I think it should be a minute and three. Minute and eight, okay, 108 remaining. This game has really turned around the flavor of it from an offensive battle to a real defensive struggle. Second down and 10 on the 33. Montana in trouble. And he got rid of it. Trying to find Craig. But you know what Montana ought to do right now? He ought to shoot his six guns and everything at Tim Harris <laughs> because Harris had him dead to right in the backfield, but old Joe swivel hipped his way out of it. But, you know, he ought to celebrate and point at Harris. Hey, you missed me. Well, maybe his ribs are hurting him too much to do that. Or either that or he's got too much class. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be third down and ten. Craig comes out of the game. Now 
looks like the 49ers are not really sure where to line up, and Montana will call a timeout. And I think he's upset yelling at Brent Jones. That's the second timeout the 49ers have been forced to use in this second half. Well, Brent Jones is only, what, in his uh, third year. You don't expect Montana to yell at Rice or Craig or those guys. You better not. You pick out the young guy and you let him have it and hope that if he's not the guy that made the mistake, the guy that did make the mistake hurt you. <laughs> the Rams are leading the Phoenix Cardinals 27 to 7 in the third quarter. The Giants leading Seattle. Houston over the Raiders 20 to 7. Not been an easy day for that man, Joe Montana, or for George Seifert, the head coach, as the 49ers, 9-1, find themselves in a royal struggle against the Packers here. Well, and the Packers are really playing for their wild card life. They cannot afford a loss today. That'll drop them two games behind the leaders in the race for their wild card spots. And a victory not only helps their wild card chances, but brings them to within a game of the division leaders, the Vikings. Third and ten. Fighting for yardage. And that'll be fourth down, and that will set up a field goal attempt with Michael Kofer entering the game. Rather conservative call there, but uh, George Seifert electing to get the lead any way he can. It's going to set up Kofer from about uh, 46 yards away. He is 18 for 22 on the season. This will be a 45 yard attempt. Kofer's longest this year was 47 yards. and the score remains tied at 14 apiece. Yeah, this high snap really threw off the timing and the rhythm for Kofer. Nice catch by Barry Helton, but you see he pushes the ball out to the right side and it never hooks back through the middle. Missed by about three feet. Watch the high snap and it just throws off the kicker just a little bit. Got into it well, but the hook just never came. Chuck Thomas is the snapper on those attempts. Meanwhile, the Packers take over on their 27. Still tied 14 all. Brent Fulwood. That's out of bounds. Trying to get back to the line of scrimmage. Bill Romanowski makes the stop with eight seconds showing on the clock here in the third quarter. Well, we're getting down to Packer time, fourth quarter. They've done very, very well in that fourth quarter, but you know something? The team that's done even better than them in the fourth quarter scoring-wise are the 49ers. So we should have a great finish. Now, the Packers have outscored their opponents 88 to 36, but you're right. The 49ers have outscored their opponents by 50 points in the fourth quarter. Completes the pass to Sterling Sharp, and that'll be good enough for a Green Bay first down as time runs out in the third quarter. Pickup of 10 yards. And that is the end of the third quarter here at Candlestick with the score. The Packers 14 and the Niners 14. We now pause for a word from your local station. We begin the fourth quarter of a tie game. Packers have a first and 10 on their own 40-yard line. We have not had any scoring in the third quarter. Each team scored seven points in each of the first two quarters of the game. Woodside, wide to the right. Don Mikowski gets hit, and the pass is complete to Aubrey Matthews. It appeared to be in and out of the hands of Romanowski, and a gain of 16 yards. Good pressure by Charles Haley who got to Mikowski. And, and Romanowski saying, how did that get to the receiver? He had him covered like a blanket, but this is a linebacker not used to covering a wide receiver. So I'm there, number 53, but watch the shot from Charles Haley on Mikowski. Super throw 
Here's the throw as uh, Romanowski is all over it. Ball went right through his hands. Gain of 16 yards and a first down at midfield. Make it the 45 of San Francisco. Romanowski, Sterling Sharp couldn't hold on. And a penalty marker is thrown at the line of scrimmage. It'll be against Green Bay. Tripping. Tripping. Offense, number 73, 10-yard penalty. Repeat the down. First down. We'll check out this penalty here. Vinegrad working against Pierce Holt. Sees him get by to the inside. There goes the old left leg. Just protecting his quarterback. But interesting mismatch in that secondary on the play. Sharp was covered by number 99, Michael Walter. Twice now, the Packers have been able to get their wide receivers isolated on linebackers. That won't hold up for the 49ers. It'll be first and 20. Back to the 45 of Green Bay. Mikowski completes the pass. No, now they say he's out of bounds. That was Aubrey Matthews knocked out of bounds on a comeback pattern. And that'll bring up... I'm not so sure this isn't a completion because Matthews is pushed out of bounds by Pollard. Now, if he could have come down in bounds, but his left foot is right on the stripe, the officials are all, all over that one. That was close to being a reception. Now, that signal there is some type of pass. You saw the Z sign there. You saw the touchdown signal. Maybe they're going to throw a touchdown pass to the receiver that plays the Z position. Blair Keel flashing in the sign. Second down and 20. Makowski's pass is caught by Carl Bland. And they get back to the original line of scrimmage, the 45 of San Francisco. Darrell Pollard made the stop on Bland. You know, my, uh, Mikowski's only been sacked one time by these 49ers. And this is where the Packers believe they can win any ball game in this fourth quarter. Their offensive line finds a way of keeping the defensive pressure away from the quarterback. And Mikowski continues to throw strikes. Four wide receivers line up for the Packers on third and ten. Here comes the blitz. Makowski's pass, and they're going to throw the flag on Eric Wright. He interfered with Sterling Sharp, and it'll be a first down for Green Bay. Inside the 30-yard line, Dick Hantak will explain the interference call. Pass interference, defense, number 21, first down. Out of our picture from the right-hand side is going to come the blitz from number 26, Daryl Pollard, and that's the guy that Mikowski gets away from. Here he comes into your picture right there. Mikowski steps up into the middle of the pocket, and throws a nice pass out here, and Eric Wright is too soon. He's got that right hand wrapped around Sharp's back. That's illegal. They mark it at the 30-yard line of San Francisco. First and 10, Green Bay. Makowski, smartly, and the flag is down. And they're going to call Daniel, they're going to call Stubbs. Daniel Stubbs for a personal foul. seeing the potential sack wisely threw the ball away but Stubbs could not help himself well, Stubbs has made a couple of crucial mistakes in this ball game he's been offsides twice and here he rubs the quarterback and really puts the uh, Packers in good shape field position wise three crucial errors for Daniel Stubbs Personal foul, they'll mark it at the 15-yard line, and the Packers will have a first down. 
Early here in the fourth quarter, 13.45 remaining. Game is tied at 14, and it's been this way since halftime. You just feel the Packers have a lot of confidence with their offense. Look at those penalties. Only one for Green Bay, six for 62 yards for San Francisco. events of this game Jim Burt and Matt Millen both in on that play one penalty for the Packers also just one turnover and that's one of the main concerns that Lindy and Fonny had yesterday error free football if you're going to play the world champs play them to a standstill and if you're going to have any chance at all of beating them you have to play perfect last week they turned it over four times and that led to 24 lion points in that tough loss to Detroit second down touchdown is nullified and this crowd is going to turn 180 degrees with this call and that man is too this I feel sorry for the guy that's off sides because this is a backbreaker for the Packers as it turns out this may break the 49ers back Defense, number 96, lined up oh. in the neutral zone. Guess who? Five-yard penalty. Well, that was Daniel Repeat Stokes. Down. Second down. In this drive, there have been three 49er penalties for a total of 35 yards, and one of them nullifies a 94-yard interception return for a touchdown by Chet Brooks. Well, and Daniel Stubbs, he worked recently he uh, may be looking for a job can't see him in this picture here there he is number 96 it appeared he must have been lined up in the neutral zone Mikowski gets good pressure there overthrew his receiver right into the arms of Chet Brooks but it's coming all the way back and the Packers have the ball on the eight yard line that's the important thing now two penalties on Stubbs for 20 yards on this drive Stubbs, no surprise in the defensive line. Let's hear from Dick Hantap. I guess he's going to tell them to go try the play. And Dick Hantap is still catching his breath on that 94-yard interception return. He had to run the length of the field to make the call on the touchdown. We have asked the defense to assist us with the crowd noise situation. Please. situation there although Pollard is doing his role yeah half-heartedly I'll be <laughs> subtly I was going to say second and three Michael Haddix for no game you know this rule originally was put in in preseason because of the domed crowd. Whoever thought it would come into play at Candlestick Park of all places. I remember as a kid sitting in Kezar Stadium and the fans were booing John Brody 
the 49er quarterback, so loud that Brody couldn't call the signals. And in Keyser at the time, there was only a half a house, about 30,000. That's Anthony Dilwick, who would have been the quarterback today. He's signaling for a timeout now. Had Mikowski not been able to play. And John Spagnola did a super job of coming off the bench all the way to Mikowski to tell Don that there was a timeout. The Packer bench could not get the communication onto the field to Mikowski. Good job by Spagnola. Long way to go. Only three minutes have gone by in this fourth quarter. 94-yard interception return called back because of a penalty. Joe Montana having another dazzling day. 49ers have turned it over four times, have been burned only once in a 14-14 game, but the Packers are on the brink right now to take a lead. They have not been behind in this game. And having that uh, long return call back is almost like having another turnover because instead of giving up seven points, the Packers have a chance here to go ahead. The 49ers have sent in their nickel people. They're obviously expecting a pass from Mikowski. Mikowski has had to play with a brace on his right knee, and he's hung in there valiantly. Stubbs is back in there for San Francisco. Third down and three on the eight-yard line. And a quarterback draw. Mikowski will score for the Packers. What a great call by Lindy and Fonny. An outstanding effort from Mikowski to get into the end zone. First of all, just to pick up the first down and then to struggle in and get the six points. Don Mikowski, second touchdown of the game. Quarterback draw all the way. Fontenot with the lead block on Johnny Jackson, and that gets him in for the six. Chris Jackie for the conversion. Don Bracken to a holder. The kick is good. And with just under 12 minutes remaining in the fourth quarter here at Candlestick, Don Mikowski and the Green Bay Packers, who need the win desperately, lead the 49ers again, 21-14. Packers lead the 49ers, 21-14. Don Mikowski throwing to loosen up. Besides the injured knee, he may have some rib problems as well. He's taken a beating. There is the scoring drive. Eight plays, 73 yards. And it was sprinkled liberally by penalties against the 49er defense. Well, Daniel Stubbs in particular. Chris Jackie kicking off. Taylor and Tillman are back for the 49ers. This will be Taylor at the six-yard line. And he goes out of bounds at the 32. Comes up limping as well. Let's take a look at the touchdown. 49ers are up faking the blitz. That's Ronnie Lott and that's Johnny Jackson. Watch Blair Bush take out Lott and then Fontenot comes up the middle and takes out Jackson. Mikowski keeps his footing and dives for the score. Mikowski with touchdown runs of two and eight yards and Taylor, as you saw, limped out of bounds and he is shaken up. A depleted wide receiver four for the 49ers. First and 10 on their 33. And the pass is dropped by Jerry Rice. That's a rarity. Well, Scott Steven, the line, got linebacker for the Packers on the left side there, did a nice job of reading that pattern. And he flashed right in front of that ball as it was coming to Rice. May have got a finger on it. Right now, Rice and Mike Wilson appear to be the only totally healthy wide receivers the 49ers have. Terry Greer has been lost to the game with a sprained knee. Second down and 10. Montana has Bradley. Steven wrestles him out of bounds, but it should be enough for a 49ers first down, and it is to the 43. And Scott Steven has taken the place of John Anderson, who came into the game with a uh, sore ankle. But Montana and the 49ers uh, changing up their offense. Got a lot of pressure the last series. They go to the rollout this time and pick up the first down. Rathman has caught six passes today. Jerry Rice has also caught six. Rice leads Rathman by one on the 49er receiving chart. First down, a lot of protection. 
but Montana throws it away. Craig was the closest man, and there was a mix-up, obviously, on that offensive play. Well, actually, the uh, linebacker, Tim Harris for the Packers, was out there shadowing Roger Craig, and that was a good decision on Montana's part. That was the same type of play that the Packers, Mikowski, had picked off by Chet Brooks. The difference in the two plays is that the Packers did not have pressure on Montana, and he could see clear enough to throw the ball away. Second down and 10. Roger Craig pushed out of bounds by Dave Brown. Close to another first down and in Packer territory. Just so many weapons for the 49ers. Roger Craig, 33 in motion here. The linebacker does not have coverage because this is a zone, too soft a zone, as Craig gets close to picking up a first down. They're going to bring out the sticks and measure it. Meanwhile, on the offensive line for the 49ers, Steve Wallace, who has been alternating with Bubba Paris, playing the second quarter, is in there now at left tackle here in the fourth. And Terry Tausch has replaced Bruce Colley at right guard, as he did in the second quarter. A system that has been working for the 49ers, and Bob McKittrick, the line coach, says that it keeps everybody involved and keeps everybody happy. The key to it is whether you win or not. Right now, the Niners trail 21 to 14. They're going to be short by inches. Rams certainly seem to have their game back in high gear. Big win last week against the Giants, 37 this week against Phoenix. And the Giants coming back from that tough loss to the Rams, leading Seattle. John Taylor has a slightly sprained left knee. And he will return, and in fact, he did get back into the huddle, and now he's come out of the game. But he's all right to play. Double tight end for the 49ers on third and one. Quarterback speak. And Montana appears to have made it. And made it on the second effort. Yeah, it really was the second effort. He was pushed back, kept those little skinny legs of his driving, and picked up the first down. You think his wife Jennifer likes to hear you describe him and have his little skinny legs? You can only use a description like that <laughs> if you're blessed with the same type of uh, problem. <laughs> Good pressure up front, though, as they stuff this quarterback sneak. Joe bounces back but keeps the legs driving and just gets enough for the first down. John Taylor back in the lineup, lined up to the bottom of your picture. First and 10, San Francisco on the Packer 46. And Jerry Boyarski came across the line. Don't believe he was drawn off. Encroachment, defense, number 61, five-yard penalty, still a first down. You won't see a lot of defensive players up and walking around when the offensive team is out on the field. But Matt Millen enjoys watching the 49ers, and he also feels it's important that the offensive team gets the support from the defensive players while they're out on the field. You don't often expect the defensive players to be that involved. First and five, Roger Craig with a quick opener up the middle, picks up a first down. Inside the 35, where Johnny Holland makes the tackle. They get the feeling that the 49ers are answering the challenge. Packers went down and got a big touchdown, but here comes Montana again, marching them back down the field, and looking then, to tie it up. This is an important game for them, too, even though they're 9-1, and one, because they lose. If the Rams win, then it's a two-game lead. They still have another game against the Rams, as you pointed out, on the road and a tough schedule. Yeah, they got the Giants and Buffalo and Chicago left to play, so... They'd like to win this one, you bet. First down on the 34. Montana lost it for Roger Craig. He's there. No, he did not have both feet in bounds and it's out of bounds.
take a look at this. This is quite a call here. There's his right foot down and a wonderful call on the play by the line judge. Don Carlson. And the back judge there, number 22 as well, Paul Betts. You bet you, baby. <laughs> That's not easy to make that call. You've got to look to see if he has possession of the ball and then look down quickly to see where his feet are. Perfect call. Despite that, the execution was perfect. But it's second down and 10, back to the 34. Here's Craig. Roger Craig gets about a yard. Robert Brown, good pursuit. The Packers have shown terrific pursuit against all of the running plays going wide by the Niners today. They really have, and they're uh, playing with a lot of determination. They are very aware of their situation. They cannot afford another loss in this season. That really gives you an indication of their determination is how well they pursue to the ball, and they're doing an outstanding job of that. It'll be third down and eight. Ball is at the Green Bay 32. Three wide receivers all to the right, and one to the left is right. Montana to Roger Craig, and he is stopped short of the first down by Mark Murphy, who's prevented the first down with a big tackle on Craig. This is that same formation where they put all the receivers to the right side, and they leave Craig and Rice to the weak side. Single coverage, and Mark Murphy makes a big play for the Packers. Big decision now for San Francisco, whether to go for it on fourth down. Decision's been made. They're going to try a field goal. We have not had a field goal in this game. Each team has tried one. Michael Cooper missed a 45-yard attempt late in the third quarter. And Jackie missed one for the Packers. This will be a 44-yard attempt. Cooper's kick is good. And that'll cut into the Packer lead. Seven minutes... 43 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter, and it's a 21 to 17 game. That's Hank Bullard, the defensive coordinator of the Packers, talking to his group. Packer lead has been cut to 21 to 17. Lindy and Fani talked about how important it was for the team to play every down as if it was your last down of the season. And I think that last defensive series for the Packers is a good illustration that they bought the sermon. Topher will kick off. Carl Bland is in the middle of the triumvirate, and it'll be Bland at the eight-yard line. And Bland is brought down shy of the 30-yard line by Antonio Goss. Want to remind you, we have a big Thanksgiving Day fair for you on CBS Sports. It all begins with the NFL today at 3.30 Eastern, and then the Philadelphia Eagles against the Dallas Cowboys. Buddy Ryan never liked the Cowboys when Tom Landry was there. Now he's got Jimmy Johnson, but he's fighting for a divisional or maybe wild card berth of his own. Cowboys could be tough. Thanksgiving is their day. Eagles have been a little shaky of late, but they did have that big win today. First down, Packers on their 27th, 7.33 to go. Kowski flips it out, penalty marker down, Sterling Sharp. We may have a holding penalty. Sharp is brought out of bounds by Romanowski at the 32, gain of about five. And it'll be against Green Bay. One of the receivers pushed off to get open. Pass interference, offense, number 80, 10 yard penalty. Repeat the down, first down. But you notice that the Packers' offensive plan now is not to sit on the ball with this four point lead. Lindy knows with seven minutes to go, a lot of time left especially when the quarterback on the other side of the field is as good at using the clock as Joe Montana is. So the Packers aren't going to sit on this lead. They're going to keep attacking. Clint Didier was the guilty party. You can see the disgust on the face of Lindy and Fonny because turnovers and penalties equal the same thing sometimes. 
Yeah, ask Daniel Stubbs. First and 20. Ball is at the 17. Mikowski flips it to Haddock. And Haddock dives forward to the 24-yard line, a gain of seven. It'll be third and long as Romanowski and Millen make the stop. They get seven, second down and long. Yeah, the important thing with that pass is to get back some of that yardage that lost with the penalty. The Packers did a nice job of that. One key thing to remember, if the 49ers get the ball back, they will only have one timeout. Second down and 13. Daniel Stokes redeems himself somewhat with a sack. Well, you know he's going to be playing hard from here on out. He's got to do something to make up for his uh, mistakes with those penalties. Here he is, number 96, working against Vinegrad. Good push into Vinegrad, and now he throws him away and grabs on to Mikowski. Loss of six yards on the play. That is the second sack of the game. For the 49ers, it'll be third and 19 coming up. And not a whole lot of plays in the playbook that are designed to pick up 19 yards. Seven defensive backs in there for the 49ers. Mikowski has it deflected. And it'll be fourth down. Coming from the left side here again, working on Vinegrad. Mikowski's chased out of the pocket by Haley, and Stubbs comes up with his second big play in a row. Still got about to have to make two or three more. <laughs> Just to get to 500. Yeah. Don Bracken will kick from inside his five. John Taylor is beat. Taylor on the run in midfield. in Packer territory at the 46. That was only a 30-yard kick by Bracken. And the 49ers have ideal field position. Trailing 21 to 17 and 549 remaining in the fourth quarter. Let's catch you up on the scores. And as we talked about the import of this game to the Packers, Dan. Big upset there for New England over Buffalo. Yep. And look at that one there. Dallas playing Miami tough. Minnesota and Chicago both lost, opening up a golden opportunity for the Packers right today. First down on the 41. Pass to Jerry Rice. Picks up about eight. Mark Murphy on the tackle. Well, you go back to George Seifert's decision to kick that field goal when the fans wanted him to go for it on fourth and one. George must have known he'd get another shot at it. Look at Rice trying to get away from his own guy in the secondary there. Roger Craig had good coverage on Jerry Rice that time. Seven catches for 91 yards for Jerry Rice, who may not have even played if he hadn't looked good in the warm-up. Here's Rice. Tripped up. Otherwise, he would have picked up a lot more by Bob Nelson. Well, what we're seeing now is the pride of champions. 49ers within, down within five minutes of the end of this ball game, showing what they're made of. First down inside the 30. Both wide receivers out to the left. marker down no snap false start offense number 66 five-yard penalty Terry still Tausch, first down false start five-yard penalty 
Candlestick Park in San Francisco on a beautiful afternoon and a big game for both teams, particularly the 49ers and the Packers who are fighting for a wild card. Nick Stockton and Dan Fouts. It's 21 to 17 in favor of Green Bay, but the 49ers are driving. San Francisco with only one timeout left face a first down and 15 on the 34 of the Packers. Robert Brown will get credit for the sixth sack today by the Packers. Dick Stockton and Dan Fouts. Coming up next will be 60 minutes, except in the Mountain and Pacific time zones. Here at Candlestick Park, the Packers are leading the 49ers 21 to 17. Clock is running and four minutes and 15 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Makowski has been a hero despite a brace on his right knee today. And the 49ers have never led in this game. This game really has the flavor of a playoff game. That's the great thing about having those two wild card spots to fight for. And the Pack fighting for one of them. Second down and 23. Montana's pass caught by Jerry Rice. And Rice is hit hard by several Packers inside the 30. A gain of 14. It was Robert Brown and Brian Noble on the tackle, and the clock is running nearly three and a half to play. Well, one thing the 49ers are going to do in any crucial situation is try to get the ball any way they can to this fella, Jerry Rice. You see him get away from Brian Noble, but the Packers are aware, and they come in with a big gang tackle. The 49ers have turned it over four times today. Montana has been sacked six other times, and yet the Niners are in a position to win this game. Third down and 10. Let's see if we have another false start. Harris Barton may be the guilty party. False start, offense number 79, five yard penalty, still third down. Well, Barton is at the top of the screen here. He's working against uh, Blaze Winter, and he just starts too soon, picks that hand up. Another mistake for a, a veteran football team like the 49ers. You just don't expect this type of play from a world champ, but uh, the Packers are putting a lot of pressure on him. That is the ninth penalty of the game by the 49ers. Certainly something you don't expect from a cohesive team like San Francisco. Third down and 15. The ball is at the 34 of Green Bay. Montana's pass to Rice, and he's hit immediately by Van Jakes. And a big play by Jakes. They wouldn't let Rice get any more yards, and that'll bring up fourth down. Rice slow getting up. Well, remember he had those bruised ribs earlier. He came into the game with a sore back. I think Montana's expecting a little bit too much of Jerry Rice on this play. Third and 15, and he gets smeared by Van Jakes. It is fourth down and 13 to go. The ball is at the 32 of Green Bay. And the 49ers, they got to go for it. They don't have enough timeouts to, let, to kick the ball away to Green Bay. Montana fires knocked away by Mark Murphy intended for Jerry Rice and the 49ers turn it over on downs to the Packers well Joe Montana's looking for number 80 across the middle here but this is as good a defensive play as you will ever see from the left of the screen Murphy with the right hand keeping that left hand down to his side, making sure he didn't make any contact with Jerry Rice. Super play from Mark Murphy. Everyone's been talking about the Green Bay offense all season long, but in the last several games, their defense has started to come to play, and he has been one of the big factors, Mark Murphy, their safety. Three big games for their defense in a row. Chicago with the win. Detroit last week, although they didn't win it, they played well in this afternoon. 
So now the Packers take over on downs on their 32-yard line, first and 10, with two minutes and two seconds to go. Keith Woodside carries, and now we'll have our two-minute warning. And I think that one of the reasons why Seaford went for it is because of the respect he has for the offensive unit of the Packers. You bet. Knew he may not get the ball back again, and he still may not. The New Orleans Saints keep their playoff hopes alive with a win in Atlanta. The L.A. Rams are moments away from a win over the Phoenix Cardinals. In the NFC West, the 49ers 9-1, but trailing here, and the Rams could cut the 49er lead in the division to only two games, Dan. Interesting record for the 49ers. Only 1-1 one one against teams with winning records. In of their last five games, they've got four teams that have winning records at this time. And they got to play the Giants on Monday night. And the Rams on the road. For those of you expecting to watch 60 minutes, it'll follow this game, except in Mountain and Pacific time zones. Two-minute warning is history. Second down and nine for the Packers. Keith Woodside. No, Mikowski on a fake. And gets close to first down yardage. Mikowski with a great fake, and everyone, including us, thought he had the ball. And now Mikowski may be paying for that run. The 49ers, meanwhile, are forced to use their last timeout. They have none left. Well, and this is a real gutty call from Lindy and Fonny with the uh, naked bootleg for Mikowski. Great fake to Fullwood, but I'm not sure that uh, Mikowski can take much more of running the ball. Lindy's hot about the treatment that uh, Mikowski got on after the slide. But that was a big play because that sets up a third and one. And if it's a first down for the Packers, this baby's over. Mikowski has rushed for 16 yards today, including two touchdowns. And the last one was a quarterback draw early in the fourth quarter, eight yards up the middle that gave Green Bay a 21 to 14 lead. And they have never trailed in this game. Philadelphia knocking off Minnesota. So the first place Vikings lose. The Bears also lose. And if the Packers can hold on and win, they will move into a tie for second with Chicago. One game behind the Vikings. Watch out for Miami in that AFC race for the wild card because they do not play a team with a winning record their last five games. They're looking good in the AFC. They are short of the first down by less than a yard. In fact, maybe a foot is all it'll be third and one Packers if they hold on and move to within a game of the lead still have a game left against both Chicago and Minnesota and they get Minnesota next week in Milwaukee and that should be quite a battle Big hog unit with Billy Ard and Tony Mandarich on third and one. And Brent Fullwood slices off tackle. First down. And that may do it. The Niners are out of timeouts, and the Green Bay Packers are on br the brink of a big victory. Bill Romanowski rides him out of bounds, and Fullwood picks up 15 yards into 49er territory. Well, the 49ers were expecting a quarterback sneak. You see them bunch the middle here. This play is very reminiscent of that long touchdown run that John Riggins of the Redskins had in the Super Bowl against the Miami Dolphins, where he broke the tackle at the line of scrimmage and went all the way for a touchdown. Fullwood didn't go all the way, but he might as well have because that may seal the 49ers' fate. They can't stop the clock anymore. Well, it isn't often that a team can overcome six quarterback sacks against them in four turnovers. And that's not going to happen to the 49ers today. Boy, poor mikowski has got to kneel down on that bum knee of his. Played a heck of a game. There's a happy group over there. After getting upset against the Lions a week ago and seeing their playoff hopes start to fizzle, the Packers have come back here and are only a minute and 22 seconds away from scoring another big victory. They knocked off the Bears, and they're right moments away from beating the world champion. And they've done 
what Lindy and Fonny wanted them to do. Play an air-free football game. Don't turn the ball over a lot. Don't beat yourself. Second down and 11. Under a minute to play. So the 49ers off to a 9-1 start. Their only losses this year have been at home to the L.A. Rams by one point earlier this season. And this one, 35 seconds away to the Green Bay Packers. Well, we saw Lindy and Fani on the sidelines take his glasses off and put his play sheet folded up and put it in his pocket. That's like Red Auerbach lighting up the old cigar. And this will be the last play of the game. Well, the penalty will make it the next to last. Green Bay never trailed. They led 7-0. 49ers tied it up. Then it was 14-7 Green Bay. The Niners tied it up, and that was our halftime score. And after no scoring in the third quarter, Don Mikowski ran eight yards to make it 21-14, and Michael Kofer narrowed that margin to 21-17. But the Packers stopped the 49ers on their last drive attempt. That'll do it. And the game is going to be over, despite the fact 16 seconds show. The Green Bay Packers are still very much in the thick of things in both the wild card and the NFC Central with an impressive 21 to 17 victory as George Seifert and Lindy and Fonny shake hands as the Niners suffer only their second loss of the season. So there's joy in Green Bay. The Packers have won and we'll be back to Candlestick Park in just a moment. In the NFC West, the Rams now trail the 49ers by only two games in the division and in the Central Division. The Green Bay Packers now tied with the Bears for second place, one game behind the Minnesota Vikings. So for Dan Fouts, I'm Dick Stockton saying so long from Candlestick Park. The final score, the Packers 21, the 49ers 17. You've been watching CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League.